Coming up in the morning edition, Bohemian heroes honored for putting service above self, the community of Fox Hill recognizing its own national heroes, and we share with you the way forward for our new junior minister of tourism. It's a Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us following your holiday on Monday. You're looking at a live shot of our ZNS Tower Cam, and on the outside is showing partly cloudy conditions, but the tropics remain quite busy. Joining us live in studio is Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean with our weather outlook. Good morning, Basil. Uh, good morning, LaDawn. You're quite correct. Uh, lots of things happening in the tropics. We have Leslie, which has been out there for well over a week now. Uh, just a problem uh, for the shipping lanes and uh, this morning maximum sustained winds increased just a bit to about 65 miles per hour and the central position of uh, that system puts it about a uh, thousand miles just to the west of the uh, Azores Island. It's moving south southeast at around 13 miles per hour and again as we said no threat to uh, land mass. And then we have newly formed tropical depression number 15 that form uh, just off the uh, Cape Verde Islands uh, overnight and that is moving towards the west northwest at about 12 miles per hour maximum sustained winds about 35 miles per hour, but that could become a tropical storm later on today. And then we have uh, Michael, which is now 420 miles due south of uh, Panama City, that's in Florida, and it's moving toward the north-northwest at about 12 miles per hour. Michael, by the way, is expected to make landfall somewhere between uh, uh, Pensacola and uh, Tallahassee during the early afternoon tomorrow as a major storm, and that means a Category 3 or greater. And uh, outside of our studios. We're under partly cloudy skies with a temperature of 79 degrees. Relative humidity, 88%. South winds at 8 miles per hour. Your barometric pressure, 1,013.1 millibars. That's 29.89 inches, and it is rising. Temperatures around the islands this morning. Great Toll Key at 77. Also, Marsh Harbor reporting 77 degrees. In Freeport, Grand Bahama, 77 as well. And then we take you into the Berry Islands, 81 degrees. Bimini at 82. 81 in Harbor Island, Rock San Elutra, out of San Cat Island. Staniel Key, 80 degrees. Also, Camps Bay in South Andrews at 80. Fresh Creek Central Andrews at 81 degrees. San Salvador and Rum Key, 81 degrees. 81 also in Crooked Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, and Ragged Island. Betsy Bay, Maguan, and Ackles, 80 degrees. 80 in Matthew Town, in Nagua. Also, the Turks and Caicos Island, 80 degrees at this hour. And your body forecast for today. In the uh, northwest Bahamas, uh, wind southeast at 12 to 18 knots of wave heights. They're going to be of a moderate nature, 3 to 6 feet. High tide, 729 this morning. Your low tide taking place at 149 this afternoon. And for the central and southeastern islands, also a southeast winds, but not as stiff. 10 to 15 knots of wave heights, 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. And that's going to do it for your first look at weather, the morning edition. Stay tuned. Your forecast for today and tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. See you later on in the newscast. It's back to work and school this morning, and your commute could be getting quite busy out there. Siesca Adderley is on our streets. Good morning, Siesca. Good Tuesday morning. This morning's traffic report, we're coming to you live from West Bay Street, and it's officially the start of the work week, but thankfully it's a short work week due to the National Heroes Day holiday last week yesterday and it was quiet traffic wise but here to tell us just how quiet it was is corporal decore bar from the traffic division good morning corporal bar and how are you on this tuesday morning i'm good cs good good morning to you good morning bahamas okay so from what i understand it was a relatively quiet weekend traffic wise yes um yes we had a relatively quiet weekend um we have had no accidents involving death or serious injury which is a good thing um, we still had one too many minor bump ups and we still want to encourage persons to do the things that we've been encouraging you encouraging you to do all year um, that's drive while not doing anything but paying attention to what's happening on the streets now we've been noticing a trend in accidents but we've also been noticing that you all are really cracking down as there have been several cases brought before the courts am i correct yes um we had Last week, you would have seen that six persons were charged for killing in the cause of dangerous driving, amongst other offenses. Um, it shows that we are doing our part, um, trying to bring closure to these matters and having these persons brought before the courts. 
Okay, and is this in keeping with the legislation that um, government is proposing as well, traffic-wise, to crack down as well? Yes, all of this would go hand in hand, uh, not only with the legislation, it, it also goes to the Commission of Police uh, Policing Plan, uh, which is public and road safety. All right. Thank you so much. You heard it. That's Corporal Decore Barr from the Traffic Division. It was a quiet weekend, accident-wise, and that's definitely a good thing. But continue to drive with caution and adhere to all the traffic laws, and it continue to be quiet, and hopefully it'll continue to be quiet in the weeks and days beyond. Back to you in the studio, LaDawn. Thanks, Tiesca. Now on to our top story this morning. The nation paused on National Heroes Day to recognize some of its finest sons and daughters. And now the journey continues to seek others who continue to make an impact in this country. At a ceremony at Government House yesterday, 36 Bahamians were awarded. They included the Order of National Hero Awards, which went to the late father of the nation, the right excellent Sir Lyndon Penling, Sir Roland Simonette, Sir Milo Butler, and Sir Cecil Wallace Whitfield. Also during the historic ceremony, current Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Menes, among those who received the Order of the Nation Award. I think um, the message that, um, that is emanating here today is that one must always not think of themselves, but think of um, the nation, think of others. Um, you're working not just for yourself, but you're working to help um, others to move the nation forward, to move people forward. So I'm honored, but I'm especially more happy and pleased for the other honorees, because as you listen and you see and recognize the contribution that they've made to society, they obviously were not thinking about themselves. They were thinking about the Bahamas at large, moving the Bahamas forward, moving as citizens, improving the quality of life as a citizen. And that's the message that must go out to everybody. We concentrate on global issues, national issues, behemoths at large as opposed to ourselves in, as an isolated entity. Then you find that not only would you do better, but the Bahamas, your country would do better. Also, the first female elected to Parliament, the Right Honorable Janet Boswick, was presented with the Order of the Bahamas Award for her achievement in the political arena. Mrs. Boswick viewed her accomplishment as quite a stellar moment for women in this country. My elevation in political life caused so many other women to become inspired. I think they felt if Janet Boswick can do it, I can do it. And yes, they can do it. And that, that gives me great, great satisfaction, knowing that so many women are no longer accepting any glass ceilings. And they're aspiring to reach and their fullest potential. I see that in so many disciplines and so many areas of life. And I'm very pleased about all of that. Others recognized during the investiture ceremony were pleased to have made an impact to nation building and to have impacted lives across this country. I'm always excited when I can help to steer somebody in the right path when you know that they were going down the wrong path and here they've turned around and they're helping to build our country. That is something that really makes one happy about really having a purpose and that you're doing something to touch your life. Well, I've been called to take care of the poor and the hurting, the, 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 the oppressed, those who are um, depressed, dysfunctional. Um, my ministry is to care for them. I, I, I feel very proud of what the crisis center and the volunteers have done. Um, but there's still some more doors to come down. There's still some more, more denial that we have in the country. But I think we've achieved a, a great, great deal. Meanwhile, members of the Fox Hill community also came together this National Heroes Day to honor eight of their own. Dozens assembled at the St. Paul's Baptist Church for a special National Heroes Service in honor of the late Rebecca Nesbitt. President of the Fox Hill Old Scholars Association, Sandra Ferguson Roll, talked about the significance of this year's National Heroes Service. This is our National Heroes Day, and it happens to be our eighth anniversary, because every will be talking about just um, recognizing heroes, but we the proud people in Fox Hill, the vigilant people of Fox Hill, we decided to come together and honor our own people. 
you know, and pay tribute to them while they're still alive and to let them know that this is a community and it takes a village to raise a child. And that's why we're celebrating today our 8th anniversary, 8 heroes on the 8th, and this is 2018. Area Member of Parliament Chanel Ferguson also echoed similar sentiments, noting that Fox Hill has always been pace setters when it comes to recognizing the service of those who have made a difference in that community. This is eight years that we've been doing this and um, the families uh, are just so pleased that somebody recognize and appreciate the sacrifices that they've made. On a national level, some people will never get a national award, but right where you live, you are a hero. This morning, I sent out some notes to some people who have done fantastic things, but they're not on a national radar. And they were so appreciative that on this day, somebody remembered them. Stay close. We've got more news right after this quick break. You're watching The Morning Edition. If you own a portfolio of securities within a brokerage account, like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, you can access a hassle-free loan, known as a margin loan, based on the value of that portfolio. Your investment portfolio is essentially used as collateral for a cash loan. And the benefits are numerous. Simple and straightforward application, quick turnaround, a more competitive interest rate, no requirement for monthly payments. Contact us for more information on margin loans. Need insurance for your valuables? Shield Insurance is the answer for you. Offering friendly, professional service at competitive prices. Our experienced staff at Shield Insurance work hard to ensure that you get the right coverage for your car, home, or business. Now introducing our new premium financing program designed to make it easier for government workers and employees of approved businesses to receive car and home insurance. Visit Shield Insurance on Thompson Boulevard or call 356-7202. ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. 1540 AM, 104.5 FM plays all the Bahamian hits. All the hits, one station. The Bahamas is moving to the music. Music that makes you feel good. Home of the number one Bahamian music beat, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, The People Station. Morning edition. It's Culinary Week at the University of the Bahamas, and joining us live in studio this morning to provide us with all the activities planned for the week is Assistant Professor Donna Williams of the Culinary Arts and Tourism Studies Department. Good morning, Ms. Williams, and welcome to the Morning Edition. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Ladon. Now, Ms. Williams, I know you are excited about Culinary Week at UB. What can we expect? Well, the Faculty and staff of the Culinary Arts and Tourism Studies Department felt that there was a need to assist in the development of more persons to enter the culinary arts um, area in the Bahamas with the expansion of all of these hotels um, since the opening of the Bahama Resort. And of course, the customers are high-end customers, and so they're looking for wonderful foods. And so we, we have joined or partnered with some of our industry specialists um, in bringing some of the industry's needs to us. And so tonight we open with a roundtable discussion, and one of our panelists is Sean O'Connell. He is the Vice President of Culinary Arts and Food and Beverage Administration at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort, and he will be speaking about some of the trends and some of the skill sets that the industry is in need of. And so if you're working in the industry and you want to know um, what opportunities exist, then you should come to the round table. We also have Brendan Folks. He will be speaking about how important it is 
in the hospitality industry to have food and beverage um, as an important component of the industry's mix. And we have Wayne Munker, who will be speaking on Bahamian entrepreneurship, because we feel it's very important that Bahamians take stakeholder of our industry, our food and beverage industry. And are there any other activities planned for this week? Yes, we have um, seminars that will take place at the university on Wednesday and open to students and the public. They start at 8 and, four, and end at 4, and that's at the culinary block. On Thursday, our students will engage in American Culinary Federation sanctioned competition. And we've brought in four certified judges to assist our students with um, critiquing their skills so they know exactly where they are on the world scene. And on Friday is our big night. We have a battle of the professional chefs. And these are teams of chefs who will engage in a mystery basket competition. And they, then at the end of the night, they will have the crowning glory of being the chef team for the year 2018. We're also offering a dinner for those wonderful meals that they will prepare at seven o'clock right there in Choices Dining Room at the university. And then Friday, we felt that we didn't want to leave out persons who really have an interest in foods, the foodies. So we, we have a competition for persons just interested in food and, ha and feel that they have a wonderful dish and they want to share it with the community. And Ms. Williams, how is the university working with the public to, I guess, promote Culinary Week this week? Well, we, we have been on a series of, of shows. We have it on our Scantrons at the university when you pass. It's on the university Scantron. It's also um, uploaded to all of the university's websites. And so persons can get, get information from, from the website or they can call the office at 677-3201. And what impact do you think the week will have on the industry and on students at the university? We feel that in particular students will be exposed to a lot of industry chefs. They would be able to speak with them about, you know, what it's like moving into the industry. What kinds of opportunities exist for them in the industry and how and also it can help to direct the areas of specialty that the student chooses once they complete their time at the university. Ms. Williams, thank you so much for joining us here on the morning edition and best of luck to you guys this week. Thank you. Thank you for having us. No, no, no problem. In other news this morning, the Bahamas has named a new junior minister of tourism, Khalil Richard, a student of the Forest Heights Academy in Abaco, beat out many others to claim the tourism title. Committee chairperson for the Youth in Congress, Samantha Cartwright, told ZNS News last week that Khalil will spend her tenure as the junior minister of tourism, promoting her platform, sustainability. She will work with various junior directors from across the islands of the Bahamas and she will push a platform sustainability and about awareness, um, education um, and to ensure that the students across the Bahamas know the parts that they play and what they can do to ensure that we continue to be a sustainable nation. And so you would see in the coming, in the, in the coming weeks that she will be working hand in hand with various uh, representatives and we call them junior directors for the islands. So we have one from Grand Bahama in the north all the way to Mayaguana in the south. We have student representatives and they will all work on their various schools and their islands to push a platform of sustainability. You may remember now eight-year-old Zion Knowles, a student at Xavier's lower school. Four years ago, she was diagnosed with leukemia and had to travel to the Miami Children's Hospital in the United States for further medical treatment. The straight-A student, who also worships at St. Anselm's Catholic Church with her parents and little sister, says she is focused and grateful to be alive. The journey was very hard and rough. It was horrifying. I didn't know what to do. Um, my life literally flashed before my eyes. I was terrified. But you know, even though you have bad times, you always have your family and friends there by your side to help you. And along that way, I had my mom, my dad, and 
My sister came to visit every once in a while, and I made some new friends there as well. Zion's mother, Ansela Knowles, says she thanks God, the medical team, and other supporters who have helped her daughter to beat leukemia. However, she says there are still some challenges. She had um, relapsed during the first year, so we had to get a bone marrow transplant, which we were unable to find a donor for. So um, she got a cord transplant, 80% um, unrelated donor. Um, from there, um, she had it rough. Her treatment was rough. Um, she had a lot of ailments and stuff. Um, we came back, but she's doing pretty well now. The only thing that she has now are seizures um, that she's taking medication for twice daily. But other than that, everything has passed. Um, she has a sugar... Um, what else? She had hallucinations. She had a lot. But everything has now um, went away. As the country observed the National Heroes Day holiday, many residents found themselves with some free time as they didn't have to get up for work or do school pick up or drop off. But here in the morning edition, we had to work. Still, this scenario didn't stop for Siesca Adderley from encouraging others to join in on her latest adventure. You're in for quite a treat. Take a look. As one of ZNS's chauffeurs, Cindy Smith drives colleagues to and from assignments daily. So if it's one skill she has mastered, it would be driving the company's fleet of vehicles. But could the same be said for driving a Segway? Well, we headed to Caribbean Segway Tours to find out. Tour guide Cardinal Clark on their offerings. At uh, Caribbean Segway Tours, we try to incorporate as much as the ministry along with uh, riding the tour. I mean, riding the Segway. Um, along Junkin Beach, Fish Fry, uh, the Tiki Hut Bar, and up by Fort Charlotte. Clark says the key to successfully riding a Segway is not to be intimidated by it. Some people are very intimidated by the Segway, but it's very fun and very easy to ride. You know, it takes less than, than a minute to learn. But what exactly would Cindy and I be getting ourselves into? We're going to start off here first in the background. You're going to get some skill training, uh, get familiar with the Segway, and then we're going to embark straight on to the Junkin Beach Long Walk, um, the Tiki Hut Bar uh, and Restaurant, and then we're going to shoot back up um, all the way to our obstacle course by Fort Jolly. Following our brief tutorial, we were off. Now, I'm not going to lie, I hesitated at first, but Cindy, on the other hand, hopped on and was ready to go. She was a pro, but eventually I got the hang of it too. It was fun and exciting. Definitely something I would do again, and of course, I would do it with Cindy. Cindy accepted the challenge. Now, LaDonna and Fisher, it's your turn. Siaska Adderley, ZNS Network News. And without a doubt, Siaska, we will accept that challenge, right Fisher? Well, ch they challenged us some couple of weeks ago to what that dance is called. Remember that? You and Siasco was telling me about it. The, the Kiki Challenge. The Kiki Challenge. Mm -hmm. We never accepted them on that. Now she's challenging us to a segue. Mm -hmm. It's on. So you're going to do the Kiki and the Segway Challenge? Kiki and the Segway Challenge before the end of this month. We're going to make sure and put them into the books. Make sure now they're done. we got to get our act together. All right. Okay. Look but, out for that. Well, coming up in sports, you know, some of the honorees yesterday at the government mm -hmm. house were sports figures, so we'll have some of those coming up. And also, it's a big day for basketball here in the 242. That story and more ahead in sports. for your valuables? Shield Insurance is the answer for you. Offering friendly, professional service at competitive prices. Our experienced staff at Shield Insurance work hard to ensure that you get the right coverage for your car, home, or business. Now introducing our new premium financing program designed to make it easier for government workers and employees of approved businesses to receive car and home insurance. Visit Shield Insurance on Thompson Boulevard or call 356-7202. If you've been dreaming of a new kitchen, head to CBS Bahamas. Spend $50 or more during the CBS Bahamas Fall Fix-Up. And you could win Pratt & Lambert paint, Pro Craft cabinets, and Wilson Art countertops to transform your kitchen. Get everything you need to fix up for fall. And enter to win at CBS Bahamas Southwest Plaza, Carmichael Road. Good Tuesday morning once again. Both swimmers 
will be jumping into the pool this morning at the Youth Olympics in Argentina. Victoria Russell will be jumping in first at 9.24 in Heat 2 Lane 5 off the 50 meter butterfly. This is her first event of these games. Then at 10.10, Isaac Bastian will compete in his second event of these games, the 50 meter freestyle. He'll be in Heat 7, lane number 7. Now the finals of both events are set for later on this evening. Sporting figures among those receiving National Heroes Day awards yesterday and Golden Girl Pauline Davis Thompson among the honorees. The former Olympic champion and one of the country's top female athletes ever was all smiles and dressed to the T to receive the Order of Merit Award. Pauline never imagining that she would be invited to Government House when she was a child. It means so much to me because this comes from my fellow Bahamians. I, I feel so incredibly blessed and I am, I am, I am um, so thankful. I am a bit overwhelmed by it all because, you know, I grew up at the bottom of this hill. And, and I always watch all the beautiful ladies and nicely dressed men come on top of this hill and come to functions here. And to be honored in this very, on these very grounds means so much because as a kid I thought it was impossible. Buddy Hill and the Sacramento Kings in preseason action last night, dealing with Haif McCobie of Spain, 132-100. He'll finish with 22 points, 5 assists, and they play again Thursday against Utah. Pretty good game for Buddy last night, as you can see him with the easy layup on the back shot. Meantime, DeAndre Aiden continues to show the Phoenix Suns' top brass why they selected him number one overall. Playing the Golden State Warriors, who, by the way, rested Clay Thompson. DeAndre finished with 18.7 rebounds in the 117-109 win. The Suns, they close up preseason play Wednesday at Portland. And that's going to do it for your first look at sports on a Tuesday. I'm Charles Fisher. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. was the talk of the town, but get ready for more. More energy, more excitement, exhilarating, compelling, informative, educational talk on The Conversation. I'm Shanique Miller. Pull up a chair with a cup of tea and join me weekdays at 4 on Radio Bahamas, 1540 AM, 104.5 FM, and The Light, 810 AM for The Conversation. I'm excited to have you around the table. ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. In our final look at what will get you started in the tropics, and Leslie is out there. It's about a little over 1,000 miles to the west-southwest of the Oslo's Island, moving toward the southeast at 13 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds increased overnight to 65 miles per hour, and we have yet another tropical depression number 50 in that form overnight, and it's about 475 miles west-northwest of the Cape Verde Islands. It's also moving west-northwest at about 12 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds at 30 35 miles per hour, and that depression could become a tropical storm later today or early tomorrow morning. And then we have uh, Michael, which is uh, moving toward the north. It's now a hurricane at packing winds of 90 miles per hour and is expected to make landfall somewhere between Mobile, Alabama and uh, Tallahassee as a major hurricane on Wednesday afternoon early and will move inland and start to uh, weaken quite rapidly as once again it will cut across South and North Carolinas. And uh, satellite pictures showing quite a bit of our showers, very broad area showers and thunderstorms associated with Michael. Some of those feeder bands still affecting the western portion of Cuba. And we have yet another feeder band just to the east of the Bahamas. And during the course of the day and the course of this week, pardon me, there will be pockets of showers and thunderstorms as a result of those feeder bands. Our forecast for today, partly cloudy, still on the breezy side, even though the winds are coming down just a tad, with one or two brief morning showers. And your high temperature should 
could get up to about 87 degrees. Tonight, we're looking at partly cloudy conditions, slight chance of a shower, 78 degrees for your low temperature, and the extended weather forecast, pockets of showers right into Thursday, a bit cloudy on Friday, showers again on Saturday, and things drying out quite nicely on Sunday, heading into early next week. LaDon? Thanks, Basil. And that does it for the morning edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Once again, I'm LaDon Davis. See you right back here tomorrow morning.